What's going on guys? Welcome back and today I'm going to be building an Imperial Fist Vindicator. Now the reason that I'm doing this isn't because I'm about to start an Imperial Fist army but I was starting off building a, a new diorama that was going to involve this tank and actually just painting up this vehicle became such a challenge in itself that I decided to make a video of it. So uh, here we go. Now, the main crutch that I leaned on for this entire build was an airbrush. So, the technique of how I've painted this armor up is going to rely heavily on the use of a airbrush. But it may be possible without, you know, just by using brush. But I don't know. I cannot confirm that. So, uh, let's just see what happens, yeah? So to start building an Imperial Fist Vindicator, what did I need, what did I look for, what was the iconography that I tried to add to this? Now, most of the iconography I added on with some transfers, which was something that I was waiting on and did arrive eventually was a transfer sheet and uh, also one of the upgrade sprues. So I bought half of an upgrade sprue kit off of eBay for about five quid, which I thought was pretty bloody good. Um, so when I was, because I want the guy out of the hatch, so I want the tank commander out of the hatch to fit in with the dar armor that I'm building later. So I've been a bit silly and I've put a power fist onto this tank commander because that's quite iconic of Imperial fists. Also, as you may be seeing here, that I'm just working out, the power fist for a Primaris is the exact same size as a power fist for a firstborn marine. I, yeah, so there's no size difference there at all. So if you want to put any power fists onto your Primaris and you've got loads left over from your firstborns, crack them out because there's no size difference whatsoever there. Now, what we're going to do is get the tank ready to be painted. But before that, I'm going to show you a quick tip, which I don't know how I haven't told you before. I've been doing this for ages. Tip X. Yes, that's right. That lovely white eraser when you mess up on your essays back when you're at school or at school it's brilliant for filling in the seam lines where the, there's gaps in the tank and gaps in the armor from the actual model kit i find it really quick cheap and effective an easy way to fill those lines and just bring it all to level and you can even sand down over the top of it just to flatten it out afterwards so yep yeah, there's another little rig bonus for you. So on screen, going from left to right, that's the order in which I painted this tank. And yeah, I know it's a weird mix of colours going for yellow, but at least I've got some yellows in there, right? Um, so I started off with Blood Angels Red, as it, which is the contrast paint, just to put in some initial shadowing before I put my first yellow onto there. A couple of things just to add if you are following along with this is I found it's quite easy to accidentally put way too much contrast paint on. So just watch how much you put on and just do it in light layers and just slow and steady that wins the race here. So once I'd done all that, I went through, I did the main armament of the tank. And let's have a look at how that went. So at this point I was just trying to work out which was going to be my next jump up in colour variant and I'd worked out that Avalon Sunset was exactly the same when it's dried as that contrast yellow. So I've gone on now, I've jumped up again to flash gits yellow because that will be worth putting down onto this tank. So what I'm going to be doing now is going to be using that 
to subtle all those red areas so that we've blended it all in so it doesn't look so stark of a color change on the model and also give it start bringing in those highlights so our next step now before we do the final highlights is going to be coming in and do some shading with burnt umber now for this i've done sort of a a 50 50 mix of burnt umber and uh airbrush thinner just because i don't want it to go on too thick and cover up everything that we've done it's just going to be adding in some shaded areas so that it's got a nice subtle transition between the two colors so now we're going to come in with our final highlight color and that is going to be phalanx yellow and the reason why we're going up to such a bright yellow color is that when we get to the weathering stage it is going to get muted down slightly and it also just gives it that those areas that won't get touched it'll have that extra powerful push through for contrasting later on once the model's complete so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my transfers on nice and early so i'm just using a bit of sponge where i'm going to drop my water onto where my transfers are so they're not floating about uh, it makes it a bit easier to control get them off that uh, transfer paper so what i'm going to be doing is just painting a little bit of Tran a Vallejo transfer softener onto the onto the uh, is it softener or is it fixer that you use for oh god I can't remember well, I'm going to use softener and fixer by Vallejo to help me affix it to it whichever way round <laughs> that you, you, you use them I, I can never remember I know the first one's whiter and the second one is more see through so there you go that's my input for that one uh Let's uh, flash forward to me putting on transfers. So it's now battle damage time. Now I have gone over this with other videos before so if you want to go a bit more in depth as to what I'm doing go back to those videos and check them out. It's mostly my tips and tricks ones. Um, but for this we're going to be using a shanty bone instead of Xandra dust like I usually use and we will still be using Rylox hide afterwards to fill in the gaps where the old shanty bone is just to make it look like it's going down through layers of paint till it hits metal and is starting to rust so once we've done all of that it's pretty much we're almost done and it's time to just to then do some little details make the model look absolutely spotty bloody dog and then uh we've got ourselves an imperial fist vehicle Well guys, here we are once again at the end of a video. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me how I've done, tell me what I could have done better. I love you guys as always, and I really do hope to see you in the next one.